on with their work. I'm going to be late. Hello there, thank you. That's mine. See you later. Hey! Bye. Kate? Yeah? What did I do with that list? I've got seven sheep dippings to check this morning. You filed it. Thank you. See you lunchtime. No, you won't. Sally's coming up from York, remember? Well, if I don't see her, give her my love. Where's my toast? Come on, Ventures, you can move faster than that. I want this place smartened up. I'll never find anything again. Well, Inspector Cross is not catching me out. He could be here any minute. What makes you so certain, Sarge? Because I know the way his mind works, Bellamy. And we can't have him thinking standards have dropped since he was a wet behind the ears constable like you. Go on, faster, faster. Everybody's gonna jump for joy. Come on. Constable Rowan. That's right. He's sheep dipping. I'm Kate Rowan. Alistair Crossley. Well, it's certainly an unusual police house. I'm between surgeries. I think that's the phrase. If you'll excuse me. Of course. The needs of the patient come first. I'll catch up with your husband in Ashfordly, I'm sure. Yes, he probably will. And uh, if I am ever taken ill in Aidensfield, I'm sure I couldn't be in better hands. Hello, Mrs. Bannerman. Hello. I'll leave you to it, then. Bye-bye. Right, Mr. Haswell, come on through. So where is he, then? Perhaps he's not coming. He'll come. And for ten things right, he'll find eleven things wrong. I know him. appreciate that things are done differently out in the sticks, Sergeant. But charming as Kate Rowan might be, I do not expect to walk into a North Riding police house and find the equivalent of a refugee camp. Well, Rowan assures me it's only temporary, sir. The police house at Aidensfield is not available for its proper use. It's a melting pot for every German virus in the neighbourhood and it's being used to run a business. That's strictly forbidden. Well, Mrs. Rowan is the local doctor, sir. A business is a business. When I was a constable, you didn't treat the rule book in quite such a cavalier fashion, did you, Sergeant? I'll speak to Rowan, sir. 
Ashford Lee is now under direct command from subdivisional headquarters in Whitby, Sergeant. So, if a shake-up is needed, then a shake-up there will be. You're cheerful this morning. I said you're cheerful this morning. We can work it out. We can work it out. Thank you, Watcher. That'll be for me. Hadersfield Arms. Hang on. Hello? Yeah, Brian? You do? Oh, brilliant, Ren. Yeah, yeah, I can do someday. Great. Tra, tra. Well? Well, he said he'd phone today and he did. Huh? Brian? With the club in Whitby. He came in last week, said he had a great voice. Oh, him. I don't know as it were your voice. He wants him. me to sing in his club on Sunday. I told you he was serious. Look, you can't just go and... I mean, there's more to singing than just singing. Is only after one thing, him. Oh, well, thanks a bunch. Mobility is the key to policing now. That means the end of old-fashioned beat pounding and the introduction of an up-to-date car patrol system. So, you're Constable Rowan, I take it. A pity you couldn't be here earlier. Sir? Inspector Crosley will be supervising the station, Rowan, from a new... From now on, Ashford Lee comes under direct command from subdivisional headquarters in Whitby. Sergeant Blaketon's been trying to get you on the radio, Rowan. It's a big sheep-dipping day for Scab, up on the moors. I was out of range. Always a good excuse. No, sir. New equipment should soon sort that out. We can put a man into space, after all. <laughs> anyway. The Chief Constable has decided it's time the command structure was brought up to date. So I shall always be paying my visits at short notice, if any. I think that's the best way to find out what's really going on. Now, the changes in the towns will be mirrored in the countryside, too. Sergeant Blaketon has maps of the larger areas to be patrolled by rural officers. Your area, Rowan, will now stretch to the outskirts of Whitby. That's all for now. Thank you, men. Sergeant Blaketon? Thank you, sir. Men. Thank you, Thank you sir. sir. Oh, by the way, there won't be any passengers on my division. Rowan. I called in at Aidensfield this morning and was rather surprised to find myself in the middle of a doctor's surgery. It can get a bit chaotic. That's putting it mildly. Now, I expect you to sort it out. And first... Yes, sir. You wouldn't have got away with that in the Met, Rowan. Don't think you will here. No, sir. That's all. Our Mr. Greengrass. Come on. sitting on a small fortune. I've got a nose for these things. Sure it's full. I don't mind charging for what's been spilled on forecourt if you're not satisfied. That's four and six. And don't say you've left your money at home again. I'll be back. Wow, 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 wow. 
old furniture. Looks like rubbish. Maybe antiques. Greengrass will be a mattress merchant. There'll be wads of money all over the place. Open invitation. You can't just walk in. Who's to stop us? Still looking for a house. Nick needs a bit of pushing, but I'm up to that. So what's your news? I've decided to take the plunge. I'm leaving the hospital. General practice? Where? Still in York. Full practice is pooling resources. We're moving into a brand new health centre. New equipment, our own x-ray. Lucky thing. <laughs> Proper facilities for clinics, a pharmacy, you name it. And you're here to gloat. Sounds terrific. Here's to it. How committed are you to Aidensfield? Eh? I always thought you came back as much because you were bloody-minded as anything. Show them you could take on a country practice. Oh, come on, Sal. There was more to it than that. It's what we both wanted. Now you've proved it. What next? A house with enough room for a surgery. Seriously, Kate. My partners in York want another GP. A woman. I'm not looking for a job. We were talking about you the other night. I'd like you to join. Yes, well, I'm very flattered, but I've hardly established myself in Aidensfield. Do you remember how we used to sit up till four in the morning, planning how we'd bring general practice out of the dark ages? Just the two of us. I remember the hangovers. They're serious about offering you the job. Sally, I'm not even thinking about moving. It's my turn. I said it was temporary, Sarge. Doesn't sound very temporary to me, Rowan. Nor to Inspector Crosley. Well? Greengrass on the phone for Nick. Greengrass. Well, I suppose we should be grateful he didn't call into the police house and drop off a dead rabbit while Inspector Crosley was there. He says he's been burgled. Oh, not again. Rowan, sort him out. And Rowan, close the door. John Forrester. It's me. How's Graham? Well, how would you feel if you had this hanging over you? Are you going to come to court? Of course I'll be there. I mean, what's going to happen, Oscar? Joan, I don't know what's going to happen. The important thing is that Graham copes. If only you'd put a stop to this when I asked you to. We're not helping him by rowing about it either, Joan. Don't you shout at me. 
Well, don't shout at me and tell me I'm shouting at you. Well, you are. Oh, forget it. <laughs> You've taken your time getting there, haven't you? They could be halfway to the A1 by now. Well, I'm hardly equipped for hot pursuit. I sometimes wonder what you are equipped for. If you just tell me what's been stolen. As a matter of fact, note. Well, you said you'd been robbed. No, I didn't. I said I'd been burgled. But they'd have had a lot if it hadn't been for Alfred, wouldn't they? There were two of them, you say? Ah, a man and a woman. What sort of car? I'm a sort of green. Or blue. Dark or light? Well, it, it, it was a sort of brownish. Brownish blue? Yeah. Or green. Make? I don't know. I was, I was trying to stop myself being smashed a bit at the time, wasn't I? I don't suppose you've got to look at the licence plate. <laughs> you don't half want your job doing for you. It were a triumph. For an ailment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could we have a receipt, please? Yeah, sure. They want a receipt. Three shillings. I said I was sorry, Gina. I only meant it wasn't just your voice he was interested in. It's charming, isn't it, from the old uncle? I think you've got a lovely voice. There you go. Try now. Thank you. I'm not trying to stop you, Gina. Good, cos I'm a free agent. I'm not still on probation now, you know. Okay. Hey, just come in there. He's following us. He's what? This is a citizen's arrest. Mr. Greencraft. Come back for another go of you. You've got a nerve. Oi, oi, oi. What's going on? Oh, the cavalry's arrived late as usual. Constable, arrest this man. He's completely mad. I've been doing your job again, haven't I? These two are my flaming burglars. Constable, we are inland revenue collectors investigating irregularities in Mr. Greengrass's tax. He's driven us off the road, threatened us and severely damaged this car. Inland revenue? Even I've never thought of that one. Yeah, hang on a minute. <laughs> inland revenue? Inland Revenue is exactly who they are. Hello. I like the look of this one. Aiming a bit high, aren't we? I asked for a selection. It'll give us an idea of what places are going for. Too much. If that village hall doesn't work out, you'll have to think about renting a shop or something. That Inspector Crossley wasn't joking, and neither was Blaketon once it finished with him. I'm surprised the Inspector was being difficult. He was absolutely charming to me. You sure Blaketon wasn't playing him up? Believe me, that Crossley comes fully played up. We'll sort something out. Tea's up. 
tea more than a cup of tea. I've been having a talk with Mostyn. And he says he can get a coach for Sunday. And we could all have a day in Whitby. And we could come and hear you sing. You're doing better, Uncle George. The tax man's taken all my dough and left me in my stately home, blazing on a sunny afternoon. And I can't sail my yacht, he's taken everything I got. All I've got this sunny afternoon. Now, Mr. Greengrass, you are not denying that the sale of land to the Ministry of Defence resulted in a profit of twenty-five thousand pounds. Twenty-five thousand? Where, where do you get a fairy story like that from? I have the MOD documents in front of me. If we regard this money as income, you will pay income tax on the first two thousand pounds and surtax on the remaining twenty-three thousand pounds. If we regard it as capital gains, you will pay eight and three in the pound on the whole sum. I'm, I'm, I'm not really with you. There will be a bill for between ten and twelve thousand pounds. It's daylight robbery, is that? There is also the question of interest on the unpaid tax. Then there's the fact that you've paid no income tax since April 1953. No, but I've, I've, I've earned note. We believe you've earned money in various ways, Mr. Greengrass. Trapping and selling animals. Rabbits, hares, fish, game. I, I know, that, that, that's poaching. I mean, you, you, you can't tax somebody for doing something that's illegal. I mean, I mean it's, it's not really right. Tax is due on all income, even when acquired by nefarious means. You can't get money out of a man that can't pay, can you? We think you can. The courts don't look very favourably on non-compliance. Prison sentences are not uncommon. P -p 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 Prison? You may be wise to avail yourself of the services of an accountant, Mr Greengrass. We are going to be seeing a lot more of each other. Good day. Dr. Rowan? Kate, I got a message to ring you. Yes, I got a letter from James Radcliffe this morning. I hardly know the man. Well, I might have mentioned you to him. Obviously, someone else you've been talking to. I just said you might be looking for something. I'm not looking for a job. But he's not talking about a new job, Kate, just a slightly different one. And Whitby's not that far for you, is it? No. No, I haven't thought of it like that. Yeah. All right, I'll think again. See you, Sally. Bye-bye. What we need here is the truth. It's not as simple as that, is it? Mr. Beangrass, this is costing you money. How much? Well, the trouble is, apart from the tax you'll pay in your wee windfall, the unpaid income tax will be charged at a sum that you can't really argue with. Because you earned it, shall we say, not entirely within the law. There are a lot of thieves. I once advised a greengrocer who paid no tax at all in 25 years. I told him that uh, if he wasn't considering changing his name and getting on a boat to Australia, that I'd work out what the Inland Revenue might accept as an offer. <laughs> it was going to be a tidy amount. Anyway, he phoned me six weeks later, told me he no longer required my services. Sounded a long way away. He was somewhere in the Northern Territory. Do you think they'll give us a discount for cash? <laughs> <laughs> now, 
No, I reckon we've got it made. Because with Blaketon in Ashfordley, this crossy fella in Whitby and a couple of hundred square miles in between, they'll never know where we are. Word is, when Crosley was a constable, Blaketon used to give him our time. And now he's his inspector. Exactly. I wonder how some went on in court today. I don't know. No, they didn't give him our time. This income tax looks as if it's getting clawed down. Serves him right. Never pays his bills. Should have been locked up years ago. I think we ought to invite him to Whitby with us. Might bring him out of himself. If you want him, you ask him. You and Kate come to Whitby? No, yeah. I might need police protection, you know. You can have it any time you want, Gina. Oh, come on. It's been ages since we had a day out. I think it's a great idea. I'd hate to miss Gina's debut. I'd have put money on you saying we should be out looking for houses. Oh, we should. Your responsibility wins, though. What are you up to? Up to? Yeah. Oh, I see. You only want a day out of the seaside if you have to twist my arm. So twist my arm, then. Anything else? Yeah. Hey, it's not my birthday, is it? Come here. Yeah. All right. You enjoying yourself, Claude? Oh yeah. Someone's I've always wanted a bus trip with a load of coppers. Drive out somewhere and have a bite to eat. That's what you want. It's a pity to waste a day like this. Yeah, fine. Well, we could drive to the Dales. Don't mind. Change for half a crown, please. Two teas, please. Get some food, will you, George? Aye. Right. Go on. The minute you walked in the joint, I could see you were a man of distinction, a real big spender. Good looking, so refined. Say, wouldn't you like to know what's going on in my mind? So let me get right to the point. Winning, Claude. I don't pop my cork for every <laughs> man I see. Hey, big spender. Is it open? Do, do you want me to try this one? A little time with me. <laughs> I 
wouldn't you like to have? <laughs> Who's a good lad, eh? Who's a good lad? Come on now, for show me another. Good time. Show you up. Good time. Good time. Good time. Good time. The minute you walk in the joint, I could see hey. you were a man. You've done spender. it again. A real big spender. Tinker. Good looking, so refined. Say, so wouldn't you like to know what's going on in my mind? So let me get right to the point. I can pop my cork. Hey, hey, you done it again. Hey, big spender. That dog knows something. Spend a little time with me. <laughs> 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 doing it. <laughs> right, here we go. <laughs> You're never going to carry all that home, Claude. I'll do my best. <laughs> Get him out of here. What? He's using that dog to fiddle. I don't know how, but every time that dog goes near a machine, he wins a jackpot. Well, I've heard some stories. <laughs> Look, I want my money back. You and that dog have got a system. What are you talking about? I'm, I won this money fair and square, and I've got the law on my side and all. What sort of law is that, then? A North Riding Constabulary. This lad happens to be a copper. Hey, pull the other one. Go on, take the money. Hey, hey, no, no, excuse me, I'm warning you that I am actually a police officer. I am a police officer. Oh, George, tell him. <laughs> Stop them. Don't let them get away. Look, they're going to make some blue murder, these people. You come in, you think you've made them money. Well, it's uh, a few years now since we had an holiday together. That was the lakes. Do you remember? Well, you must have been about five. I thought maybe we could uh, do something this year. It's not too late. Perhaps we could think about, uh, well, going abroad somewhere. <sighs> Graham. The point about today is that, well, you and me, we spend some time together. Talk to each other. Well, don't just sit there and ignore me. Look, Dad, don't want to go away with you. Too old. Never was that great, that's why we stopped doing it. Are you coming or not? Look, Brenda, I've told you I don't want to, got it? Look, I want to go back to the hotel, John. Well, go back then. I've had a splitting headache all morning. I don't want to stay on the beach and I don't want to drag Jenny back on my own. Well, go and lie down. I want another swim. She can stay here with me. I don't know what the big deal is. The big deal? I'm glad I twisted your arm. I've been thinking. No, I'm not thinking. It's our day off. Now, listen, I've... I've been wondering whether... However I say this, it's going to come out wrong. Well, why don't you put a Kiss Me Quick hat on first? It's a sure cure for seriousness. I knew this doctor once. Oh, shut up. Her very words. Hey, you're making a good job of that. Yeah. It's a lovely castle. It's not finished yet. It's going to be this big. It's almost big enough to live in. Don't be silly. Tide washes it away every day. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
Nick, before we commit ourselves to a house we can't really afford, we've got to decide if we're doing the right thing. Me with the practice and you and your job. We've got to take all that into account to make sure that staying in Aidensfield is what we should be doing. I mean, Whitby isn't that far from us, is it? Is it? Here, I'm going for another swim. Here's some money for an ice cream. Why didn't you tell me before? It wasn't anything to tell until a couple of days ago. Not even then exactly. So what is this job? It's not a job. It's amalgamating practices. A version of the group practice Sally's going into in York. I don't want to work in the city, Kate. We wouldn't have to live in a city. I don't feel I'm doing the job I should be doing in Aidensfield. I need to be a doctor now. And that means having the same resources as everyone else. And that means amalgamation, group practice. We can't finance anything on that scale. But this Dr. Radcliffe can. He's got the biggest practice in Whitby, but he can't handle it all on his own just now. So it's come at an ideal time for both of us. So we don't move to York, but we do move to Whitby. I haven't made any decision yet. I haven't even answered his letter. I thought I'd talk to my husband first. Hey. We've both got careers. We can't expect either of them to stay the same forever. Have you seen my daddy? No, I haven't. Have you lost him? Yeah. Where's your mummy? She went back to lie down. She does that when she shouts to each other. What's your name? Jenny. Well, why don't we try and find him, eh? Will he be by your sandcastle? He's gone now. I've looked for him everywhere. Well, don't worry. We'll find him. Hey, Jenny! What are you up to? I want to walk. We need a thruppenny bit. Have you got a thruppenny bit? No. Excuse me. We might see Daddy. Go on, let her have a look. Hold on. What's wrong? Someone in trouble. Look after the little girl. <laughs> There's a man drowning. you could have done, Rowan. I don't suppose you meant to leave the little girl for more than a few minutes. But it's deceptive when you're out there. You just shouldn't have swum out so far. I know you did your best.
I've had enough of this. Where are you going? Get some fresh air. Now listen, you can come with me, you can stop here, or you can walk back home. Please yourself. It's not time to make a change. Just relax, take it easy. You're still young, that's your fault. There's so much you have to know. I was once like you are now. And I know that it's not easy to be calm when you found something going on. Well, you could be fitter. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you came up. Thanks. Look at this view. Well, sit down. Your mother and me came here when we were courting. I loved your mother very much, you know. And she felt the same about me then. Yeah, that's history. Aye. My history, hers, yours. Nah, that had to do with me. I don't know why you're bothering. I'm a failure, right? School. Mum, you, and now Sergeant Blayton's son's been in court. When your mother and me started off, we thought it would all be like this. And when things weren't right, we just pretended they would come right by themselves. And when they didn't, and the years went by. It was too late. We didn't know each other anymore. Was that my fault? No. It was our fault. I let her down, we let each other down. But most of all, we let you down. And there's nothing I can do about that. Except say I'm sorry. You know, I wasn't born with sergeant stripes or whatever your mother might say. I know, Dad. Well, we could try again. We can work it out and get it straight or say goodnight. We can work it out. We can work it out. Great. I've <laughs> got this for Alfred. All right. Oh, bad swap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, Phil, don't worry about it. We won't say anything. Just hope they don't identify me. Hardy boy. Well, mum's the word, eh? All right. All right, mum's the George. word. It'll be right. I hope so. Try to see it my way Only time will tell if I am right or I am wrong While you see it your way There's a chance that we might fall apart before too long We can work it out We can work it out Life is very short And there's no time For fussing and fighting, my friend <laughs> hey, you don't that. <laughs> so I will ask you once again. Try to see it my way. Only time will tell if I am right or I am wrong. While you see it your way, there's a chance that we might fall apart before too long. We can work it out. We can work it out. Good boy.
reading about you in the paper, Rowan. There's an article here in the Yorkshire Post about the drowned man. Mentions you. And there's another piece. The journalist seems to think it humorous about a brawl in an amusement arcade. Started by a large fat man with a smelly lurcher who appeared to be using the dog to fiddle one-armed bandits. Unlikely. The owner took exception and a disturbance ensued. Lurcher and owner disappeared with two accomplices, one of whom claimed to be a constable in the North Riding Constabulary, unlikely in the extreme. I don't know any constables who are capable of aiding and abetting a dog. Do you, Bellamy? Good morning. Ready for inspection, Sergeant Blaketon? Ready and waiting, sir. Now, uh, before we start, presumably you've heard what happened in Whitby from Rowan. Very sad, sir. Mm. There's also a scurrilous article in the newspaper about a fracas in an amusement arcade. Fracas, sir? A man who claimed to be a police officer. Really, sir? I assume no one else was in Whitby yesterday afternoon. <laughs> well, I certainly wasn't, sir. <laughs> Uh, shall we start with the paperwork? Perhaps we should start with the custody record, Sergeant. Right, sir. Well, this way. Bellamy, cup of tea for the inspector. Yes, Sarge. When are you going to see this Dr. Radcliffe? Wednesday. If we ever felt Aidensfield wasn't right, there are other villages. Wouldn't have to change what we want. It's not going to be easy to leave, though, is it? I promised you a lot of things, but I never said so it, it would be easy. easy. You're right, though. It's beautiful. 